Well, looks like Iran's going to be back in the news here pretty soon because uh, two oil tankers just exploded again in the Gulf of Oman. No, this is not a headline from last month. This is, in fact, from this morning uh, where two new tankers have blown up. Uh, and uh, unlike the last two, these were not small little uh, supposed limpet mines, uh, which only did, you know, negligible damage to the exterior of the hull and failed to really threaten uh, the boats or sink them. Uh, these uh, two new explosions on the boats this morning were quite substantial, and from the pictures we're seeing, uh, it seems like they did quite a bit of damage. There's uh, smoke filling the sky. The 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 uh, at least one tanker that I could see was certainly burning and on fire. And Iranian media is reporting that uh, at least one of them sank, although that appears to be untrue. Nobody's confirmed that, and I haven't seen any pictures or anything of either of the tankers uh, sinking or sunk. From what I understand, uh, these... Uh, tankers are compartmented, so it's pretty tough uh, to try and sink one unless you blow a lot of holes in it and fill up every compartment. Now, of course, after the U.S. spent so much time and energy trying to blame those piddly little attacks from before on the Iranians, which again may or may not be true, we really have no way of knowing one way or the other, uh, I'm sure that they will not waste the opportunity this time around to blame these larger and much more substantial attacks also on Iran. Interestingly enough, one of these uh, ships that were hit was uh, Japanese, uh, at least owned by Japan, and uh, the Japanese prime minister happens to be in Tehran today for a two-day visit. He is the first Japanese prime minister to visit uh, Iran since the revolution, and uh, the idea was that uh, you know he could sort of make nice with the Iranians and then act as a, a bit of a mediator uh, between uh, the Ayatollah and the United States. Now, of course, it seems to be in uh, serious jeopardy uh, if uh, Iran is in fact blamed for these oil attacks on or for these attacks on a Japanese tanker. Uh, well, then <laughs> the Japanese prime minister is not going to be in a uh, much of a position to act as a, a neutral mediator. So this certainly doesn't benefit the Iranians, to say the least. And so I'm, of course, quite skeptical uh, that the Iranian leadership uh, would order such an attack. And, of course, if this uh, sort of attack were to be carried out, you would have to imagine that under normal circumstances, the Ayatollah would and the president, you know, would know about this. Uh, but in this case, the only way that I see it happening, if it were, in fact, carried out by Iranian agents, would be if the IRGC was acting uh, independently outside the chain of command, which again, I, I'm not going to try and assert that that's the case because that would be pure speculation. Because to me, I, I don't see how the IRGC has any more of an incentive to try and uh, attack these tankers and attract the ire of the U.S. and the Arabs uh, more than the Ayatollah does. I mean, perhaps there's some sort of internal politics we don't know about that could be possible, but I really see no reason to believe at this point. Uh, that the Iranians had any uh, real reason to do this. Now, the Saudis and the UAE, on the other hand, I think did have quite the incentive to do this. And of course, uh, those two states are led by bloodthirsty uh, monarchs who are just as bad as uh, the folks in Iran, if not worse. I mean, frankly, I, I wouldn't want to live in either of, in any of those countries around there. I think they're all a bunch of barbarians as, as far as leadership goes. But the Saudis, considering that they've wanted the U.S. to get rid of Iran ever since, you know, the Iranian Revolution, and frankly, they didn't like the Shah either. You know, Arabs and Persians just don't seem to get along well. Uh, well, this would be a good way if the Saudis perhaps uh, were sophisticated enough to plant uh, bombs or something, because it certainly wasn't their navy that you know that blew these ships up. If they were able to plant bombs on these ships and blow them up and sink them and blame it on Iran and get the U.S. to invade, you know that would help Saudi Arabia because not only would they get rid of Iran, but they would also get significantly higher oil prices, which is pretty great if you're Saudi Arabia, uh, since Saudi Arabia has uh, you know their their whole economy is oil. They're a petro state, and the same goes for UAE, which is just you know little Saudi Arabia. They're practically the same country, uh, same sort of leaders. They wear the same uniforms uh, with those big white robes. Of course, I mean, as far as foreign policy is concerned, they might be very different domestically speaking, but, you know, as far as the international stage goes, typically the UAE and the Saudis are always going to be on the same page. But again, just like with Iran, we have no evidence uh, that they uh, perpetrated any of this. We have no idea, uh, evidence-wise, uh, who is really at all responsible for this, but... We can be sure that this will become a very big issue here in the next couple weeks. Uh, this is going to be a bigger deal than the last two tankers which were blown up because, you know, this we have footage of 
it's these are pretty bad pictures. Last time we didn't get pictures. Um, we didn't get pictures for a while, and we got pictures of one ship that got blown up, and it wasn't that much damage. Yeah, I mean, it looked like it, it could have even just collided with another ship in the port uh, to sustain that kind of a damage. It didn't look like it was blown up. The, this ship that I saw this morning, and you can find it on Twitter, and I'll probably have it for the thumbnail of this video, uh, the picture looks pretty bad. Uh, it's not sinking, but it was certainly on fire, engulfed in flames, and there was a lot of smoke. Now, interestingly, the uh, the shippers, uh, I forget the name of the organization, but it's so something like a, a, some kind of a international shippers organization, is basically saying that the Straits of Hormuz uh, are unsafe now, and that uh, they will not uh, have their ships transit uh, that region and that, uh, that body of water uh, without uh, proper military escorts and this, of course, if every tanker has to be escorted uh, by uh, armed ships, this is going to uh, raise the cost of transportation uh, significantly uh, on, for, on oil and will certainly lead to higher oil prices. A significant chunk of the global oil supply flows uh, through those waters, so it will not be possible uh, really to have much of an economy if oil does not flow through there. This is why uh, the U.S. is always you know, maintain that basically if uh, Iran shuts down the Straits of Hormuz, that's their red line. And that, of course, is why Iran has always threatened to close the Straits of Hormuz, uh, but never actually done it, because it would mean the end of their country. Everyone understands that in the modern age, uh, you don't threaten the oil supply. But if this attack is blamed on Iran, then it certainly will look like uh, that Iran is a threat to the global oil supply, that they are a threat to the oil trade, and therefore a threat to the global economy and world peace. And I don't know what better uh, Casas Belli, uh, the United States, uh, could ask for. John Bolton, I'm sure, is just is just giddy with excitement and has n absolutely no idea what to do with himself right now. And I'm sure uh, that if the administration is not sufficiently hawkish, uh, he will uh, probably throw a bit of a temper tantrum uh, tonight when he gets home to his wife, because this is basically a, a, a John Bolton wet dream. If they can blame oil tankers blowing up in the ocean on Iran, well then this, if anything, should be what gets them into war. If uh, John Bolton can't get his war with Iran after they supposedly blow up some oil tankers, then he'll never get his war with Iran. But of course, as I've said in the past, the real people uh, who are impeding uh, the march towards war with Iran are Mike Pompeo and Donald Trump. Uh, both of them are worried about uh, future electoral results, and they care less about the actual, you know, geopolitics and things, uh, as in the short term at least. I think that, uh, as I've said, Mike Pompeo knows that a war with Iran would be a disaster and would not go well, and if he's Secretary of State when that happens, well, then that looks very bad for him. Mike Pompeo, it is rumored, uh, plans to run for president after uh, Donald Trump is out of office. Uh, perhaps in 2024, uh, depending on, you know, well, I guess no matter what, whether Trump wins or not, Pompeo would be running in 2024. And of course, President Trump has to worry about the election next year, and he doesn't want to be in the middle of a, of a terrible quagmire that he started uh, at the time of the election, or else there might be some sort of a, uh, a belated anti-war movement in this country, uh, which uh, sees a Democrat elected. This is why I've said that at the um, at the very earliest, uh, we should expect a war with Iran in summer of 2020 so that uh, the president gets that patriotic morale boost of, hey, we're going to go invade a country and, uh, and beat them up, and so that everybody rallies around the president just in time for the election. But uh, it's soon enough after uh, the start of the war to where we wouldn't have really seen the tide turn against the Americans, and uh, we should still act triumphant. You know, because that's how it was with Iraq at first. You know, when they first invaded Iraq, they walked all over the Iraqi army, and everyone felt really confident and things, and they're like, yeah, you know, we kicked their butts. And then, of course, when you try and actually hold territory rather than uh, just, you know, conquer an army, uh, that's very difficult because, you know, you're trying to micromanage the lives of, you know, tons of people who you've never met and have no experience with in a culture that your soldiers are unfamiliar with in a language they don't speak. And there's insurgents who don't like being under military occupation, and it gets very messy. That, I think, is what Pompeo and Trump are worried about. They don't want all those bad headlines coming out around the time of either of their elections. Bolton, on the other hand, doesn't give a damn about elections. Bolton's never been elected at anything. Uh, he just wants his wars. So if there was ever a time, though, uh, when he would get it, as a, you know, 
this would be the time. So we'll want to watch the next couple weeks, see how the administration handles this, whether they try and slow roll the information or whether they start making a uh, an Iraq-style case and saying how Iran is the greatest threat to humankind in uh, American history. We should be able to know uh, within a week uh, which way this is going to go. So I'll make another video to follow up on this at that point. Uh, but for now, if you gain anything of value out of this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and subscribing. And if you do subscribe, uh, please do click the bell because uh, I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you back here in the next one.